Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Two Rivers Tuesday. I'm your host, Maggie Colella, here with John Teague, our pastor. How are you? What's up, Maggie? (laughs) I love when you say, I'm your host. I like to do that, too. It's very fun. All right. How are you today? I'm good. Good. Yeah. Good. All right. Question for you. How do you feel about banter on podcasts? Like, do you fast forward (laughs) through it? Are you here for it? Do you think people hate this part of our podcast? Do they love it? What are your thoughts? Well, that's a, it's a, I'm conflicted on that because, you know, when I'm like, when I'm clicking on a podcast that's being done by someone I don't know, and they're like shooting the bull and bantering at the beginning of their thing, like, I'm like, get to the good stuff, you know, like, I don't care about whatever it is you're bantering about, you know, um, in my mind, people that are listening to us that know us, like enjoy the banter as we talk about whatever it is, you (laughs) know? And, and as someone who is on a podcast, who's talking right now, like I enjoy the banter because it's just fun. It's fun to, to learn new things about, you know, one another and talk about nonsense. Yes. And talk to me about this phrase, shoot the bull. You've never heard that phrase? <laughs> no. I heard shoot the breeze. What else have you heard about? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I feel like there's some other terms Wait, you is can't that say. The, is that the the phrase shoot the breeze? Shoot the breeze. Yeah. I, people say shoot the breeze. Shoot the bull. That's new. Shoot I think the you're bull. the only person I've ever heard say that. Really? Yes. No. Yeah. Okay. Shoot the bull. Shoot the bull is just like, hey, you're just hanging out. Yeah. You know, you're just sitting around shooting the bull. Shooting the breeze. Yeah. Shooting the breeze. <laughs> I feel like. That's... Listeners, you can tell us, are you a shoot the bull person or a shoot the breeze person? Yeah. Tell me, tell us what you shoot. <laughs> we would like to know. Speaking of banter. Uh, yes. All right. On Sunday, Nick opened his sermon talking about like seeing something, but drawing the total wrong conclusion. Do you yes. ever do this? Uh, I'm sure I do. The one that he, one of the examples that Nick gave, I am 100% guilty of, and that is the hot food thing. Um, it does not matter. Katie can be like, that's really hot. And I'm like stuffing it in my mouth. And then I'm like, <sighs> you know, like you do the thing where you suck in yeah. the air. Cause that like somehow cools it off, yes. you know? Uh, or, or, you know, you're just like, ah, ah, ah. And my whole family, all the girls, they're just like looking at me like, <laughs> Duh! Like we we just told you yep. that that's going to be hot. I remember uh, years and years ago uh, in, uh, when I was in student ministry. Um, Chris Jessen, we worked together, and uh, he he and his intern made this video about um, Totino's pizza rolls. I think Jake has shown me this. Really? Video okay. It was so funny. We should try to find that <laughs> online somewhere. Um, but just how it is a universal fact that when you make pizza rolls, mm-hmm. no matter how you cook them, microwave, toaster oven, regular oven, like you always want to eat them right away. Yep. And they're always filled with liquid magma, yes. like from the core of the earth. Like that stuff <laughs> takes so forever hot. to cool down. And it sticks like right behind your two front teeth and oh. it just like blisters it. And it's so frustrating because you're so excited mm-hmm. to Man, eat pizza them. rolls are good. I mm. had those recently, actually. If you can get them just right where they're like... They got, they're kind of like, it's got that texture on the outside, mm-hmm, you know, they're the not crisp. just mush, yes. but they got a little bit of crisp and like right around the seams, it's almost kind of like chewy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes. Mm, that yes. sounds good when you get pizza rolls for lunch. I, that, that edge thing, um, that's a thing. Like I like edge brownies. Are you an edge oh, or a middle? Um, I think I like edge. Yes, yeah. Edge, yeah. Cause yes. I like that kind of like it's cooked a little more mm, on the, the edge. Yeah. Yes. Let me tell you what I have no time for is anything besides just cheese pizza rolls. I don't want anything else in there. They're okay. trying to get all creative with what they're putting in there and they shouldn't. No. Okay. Yeah. Just cheese. Yeah. Cause it's weird too. Like they're like those little cubes of, of, pepperoni or whatever it is that's not me yeah i got you there's no way it's me yeah yeah they're like it's so small they'll never know (laughs) right yeah i'm with you on that cheese cheese is good yes um i do that with pizza every single time not pizza rolls but just regular slice of pizza like there's i will be burning my mouth on pizza absolutely i cannot, cannot wait i cannot wait I have found that if you use a knife and fork, it helps with that. It does mitigate some of that. Because for some reason, when you... pizza with a knife and fork. Am I a psychopath? I don't know. Well, I've told you, I've told everyone about my condition. (laughs) Yes. That I have tactile defensiveness. Yes. That's what it's called, right? Like, I don't like things on my hands. condition. But but when I... (laughs) It's it's a self-diagnosed condition. (laughs) And when I use a knife and fork and eat the pizza, like, you don't get all that, like, 
the dusty stuff, stuff on, on your, your hands. hands but also when you bite into it like holding it like you're at the top of your mouth is exposed and committed <laughs> but when you do like with a knife and fork you can control that a little bit easier I cannot speaking of nothing you... <laughs> speaking of talking about nothing on a podcast <laughs> yes yes but i would love to have another podcast conversations about hot pockets and other freezer oh, food yes. that was awesome when we were growing up yes, praise god yes okay another all right time. why did nick talk about this on sunday that's a great question why did all right, he talked about it because we are just in our humanness we can look at something and come to the totally wrong conclusion like yes. we do with food um, and so similarly, we can come to the Sermon on the Mount or even come to Jesus and like see his teachings, but somehow come to like the totally wrong confusion. Mm-hmm. And this kind of um, piggybacks off of what you talked about the previous Sunday, um, that just kind of like our view of Jesus mm-hmm. will inform how we hear him in this sermon. Um, and so Nick talked a little bit about one of the kind of wrong ways to view, especially the Beatitudes and the whole Sermon on the Mount is to read it as a laundry list of like, do these things. Mm -hmm. Um, And I loved like kind of his fierceness in this one sentence he said was that we slap Jesus in the face Yeah. when we look at this and we read it and we're like, okay, I got to do better. Um, So talk a little bit about why we do that. Like, why do you think we're so wired to read it that way? We want to earn our way in. Yeah. Yeah, I just think at the end of the day, and um, yeah, at the end of the day, we we want to feel like we have some control over like how well we do, um, and we want to be able to to try to measure up. Yes, I think that's part of it. Yeah, you I know? think so too. I think it's just the waters that we're swimming in are just very like achievement practical check the box get yeah. it done yes you can do awesome things and so when we come to the words of Jesus and we're like okay just tell me what to do tell me what I need tell me practically how I can check check this box so I yeah. can feel better about myself or feel like I'm growing um, but I think Nick helped us see like that's not really what Matthew is doing here mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so he talked I thought this was super helpful just like that sandwich kind yes. of thing that Matthew does and so in the beginning of Matthew's gospel and at the end, like his whole point is Jesus came to save sinners. Yes. Um, and so the the meat of the sandwich, if you will, is this sermon. Mm-hmm. And so the whole sermon has to be interpreted through the lens of Jesus came to save sinners, yes. which is this whole idea that you've been kind of shepherding us to see is that like he's delivering us Mm -hmm. all through this he's not adding weights and saying do better do more you got to try harder Um, but that's just so our lens is to come to it and so I think what I feel like the Lord is just inviting our church family into through this series is to try to like remove that lens that like we're all gonna default to is Mm -hmm. to come to it time and time again and be like okay I gotta try harder I gotta be this I gotta do more Um, but to, if we really see Jesus, he's delivering us and he's freeing us. I mean, he came to save us. So it's a totally different lens that we come to it with. Yeah. And part of what he's delivering us from is this, this try harder, do more mentality that, that will somehow earn blessedness. Mm -hmm. He's delivering us. We talked about this a couple weeks ago in Colossians chapter one, I think it's verse 13, uh, 13, 14, somewhere around in there. Um, where God has has delivered us from the dominion of darkness. He uses that those exact words Paul does. He's mm-hmm. delivered us from the dominion of darkness into the kingdom of his beloved son, mm-hmm. in whom we have uh, redemption, the forgiveness mm-hmm. of sins. I, I may be blending two different verses. <laughs> Jesse's looking it up. Um, Colossians chapter one. But but this deliverance is, we've, we've been delivered out of this dominion of darkness, this try harder, you better earn it, you might not be enough. Mm-hmm to like, I've, God is saying like, I've put you in my kingdom. I've mm-hmm. drawn you to myself. I've delivered you out of this one spot. I've put you in here and here, here's, here's where the blessing is. Mm-hmm. And these are the people that are in my kingdom. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's what the Beatitudes are trying to show us is when the kingdom of God breaks through your into your life and and transforms you or when you are put into the kingdom of God however you want to look at that mm-hmm. then um you start you you look like this mm-hmm. like these are the people yeah that 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 look like the kingdom of God yes yeah and i feel like that's such a reversal because 
everything in our culture is saying like you are blessed when you try hard and when you achieve things and when you get it done um and so this is a reversal of like no like you have when you are this this totally opposite way that you like think would be the good life yes that's when actual true blessing comes yes um so talk a little bit about that word blessed what do you think about maybe how how we should think of what that word is meaning in these yeah well nick talked about it a little bit that um some people have tried to translate it as happy mm-hmm. uh, which is not a bad translation going from greek to latin to english you can get happy but the problem is as nick said English has changed. And so happy has this very circumstantial or happenstance kind of, uh, char- character to it. Yeah. And it's really, that's really not, it's not just to say happy are the people who are this, mm-hmm. you know, because I mean, you know, happy are those who mourn, mm-hmm. right? Like <laughs> yeah, that feels sense. weird, you know, but what this is, is a declaration of the, of the people who are, who are truly living the good life. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, the Bible project guys sort of translate it like how good is life for those who are poor in spirit? Mm-hmm. It's kind of like a, it's an observation of like, yeah. wow, look at their life. Mm-hmm. Like our world wants to like, look at their life. They travel all over the place. Look, she's a, a Disney world influencer. It just <laughs> goes and gets mm-hmm. to do what, look how great her life mm-hmm. is, you know, or look at his life. Like he's jacked up, he's ripped, he's in great shape and he's successful mm-hmm. and he drives this amazing car. Look, yeah. look at how blessed his life is, you know, hashtag blessed. And, and what we see here is the way the kingdom operates, the way the King is describing mm-hmm. his kingdom is look how good it is. How good is life for those who are poor in spirit? Mm, Yeah. Yeah. That is so opposite of like, as you're saying that I'm just like realizing how much that worldly um, idea and value system of like what the good life is and what blessing looks Mm -hmm. like is like ingrained in my view of everyone. Like I would look at, yeah, like kind of what you're describing, like, look at that. Like, I bet that's the good life. How often am I looking at someone who's poor in spirit and being like that, that's what it is. Like that's the good life. And so I think this, these words are just so beautiful because it flips upside down. Like what, what is, of value to us and like where blessing really is and just makes me want to like have eyes to see those who are poor in spirit and like view that as of like so much worth and value and those who are mourning and like seeing the value in that and those who are meek and seeing the value in that instead of my like broken value system that looks at just like comfort and ease and stuff as like oh there's the good life you know that's beautifully said. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you kind of were touching on it a little bit. My like, mind is having a hard time getting this right, but we talked a little bit beforehand that like a, a helpful way to kind of say it would be like, you are poor in spirit, therefore you have been favored by God. Is that kind of a right way to, to phrase it, to kind of help people think through it? Like you are these things, Mm-hmm. because the kingdom of God has broken into your life. So you are these things. Therefore, like God has favored you. Yeah. Maybe it would be uh, helpful to start with what it isn't. Okay. Okay. So let's, let's test this. If we were to say, blessed are you or you, you know, that's blessed are you. It sounds like Yoda, you know, or, <laughs> you know, like the, the, the new Testament. Um, <laughs> You are blessed when you are poor in spirit. Uh That's not what Jesus is saying. Okay. He's not saying like, because then you would have to ask the question, well, what about when I'm not? Mm -hmm. Am I, am I not, am I not blessed then? Mm -hmm. Um, So I need to like get back to, get back to poor in spiritville, Mm -hmm. you know, where then I'll be blessed. That's, it's not really what he's saying. What he's saying is because the kingdom has broken into your life, like you are blessed Mm -hmm. and you are poor in spirit. You have recognized your need. I mean, if you think about it, when when you came to know Christ as Savior, there was a recognition of your need. I cannot save myself from my sin, but Jesus died on the cross for my sin. 
and I need him as my savior. Mm-hmm. You recognize your need. Mm-hmm. And you just think too about the times when you have, you know, come to him recognizing that you are needy, but he is, is worthy and good and gracious and generous. Like there's a, there's real blessing in that, right? Yeah. Like he's done that work in your mm-hmm. heart. So this is a, you know, painting a portrait or a, if like a sketch artist, you know, like on a, on a show where they're like sketching out, you know, who did it. Um, the people that are in the kingdom of God look like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I think there's great comfort and encouragement in that. And that kind of goes into what Nick talked about with like the now and the not yet of our faith, that there's so many things that like, we are saved and we will be saved. We are adopted yes. and we will be adopted. We are sanctified and we will be sanctified. And so it's helpful for me. I feel like it's like healing for me even to go through these beatitudes and like receive them as like mm. identity um, that like I am because I am his, like I am poor in spirit. I am meek. I do hunger and thirst for righteousness. Like I am these things because he has done that instead of where like, what I typically would approach these as is like, okay, I need, what can I do to try harder to be more p- poor in spirit? Uh-huh. Um, and so I feel like that is just a helpful practice. So I want to invite everyone to join me in that and just like read through these and be like, thank God that he's done this in your heart and receive the like now of this, that this is a picture of who you are. If you're in Christ that like he has broken in the kingdom has broken into your life and made you these things and is making you these things. So be who you are. Yes. And don't try to like find blessing in the opposite of these Mm -hmm. things, because these things are the opposite really. Like this is the upside down Mm -hmm. world, so to speak. Yes. Um, and, and, and so we don't need to like, yeah, what you said. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think there is just like a receiving the blessing that has already been mm-hmm. given to each of us mm-hmm. instead of searching for like a fake blessing and so many other things that we think will bring blessing. Yes. <laughs> I don't know yes. if I'm making any sense. Um, okay. But one other thing that he said that was, I thought was helpful was this poor in spirit, just to kind of like further tease this out. It's not low self-esteem mm-hmm. and it's not what I call like worm theology, which is kind of this like um, concept of like, taking the truth of our brokenness and like our depravity and our need for Jesus, but like uh, overemphasizing that into an unhealthy extreme where we're just like constantly like beating ourselves up in like a non honoring way to who we are like, as I'm image a terrible bearers. Person. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so I think that's like a very niche subculture Christian thing that like might be applicable for some people, but, but might not be for others, but just like, It's this, again, this now and not yet that like we are unworthy, yet we've been made worthy (laughs) and we are like needy, yet like we're made in his image. It's just like this, like real tension. Um, John Piper described it as like this kind of both. He described it as broken hearted boldness, contrite courage and lion hearted lowliness. Mm -hmm. So it's not just this like low self-esteem. It is just like this, like blending of kind of our like dual natures if you will Mm. um so talk a little bit about what might it look like to be poor in spirit like if we kind of further tease this out and describe some evidences of when this poor in spirit breaks through in our lives what does that look like well probably the first thing that comes to my mind is those who are poor in spirit know they need help and so they ask for it, Mm -hmm. you know, and not being, not being afraid to admit your need or to admit your brokenness. So that looks like not being afraid to confess your sin perhaps. Um, and, and know that, um, there's, there's true blessing in that. Yes. Yeah. I have a friend who I would say like, I get glimpses into this breaking through her life in like lots of beautiful ways. And one of the phrases that she says, just like, Every time I talk to her, I feel like she says it multiple times. She's just like, I need Jesus. And that's just like, she's very comfortable saying Mm -hmm. that and like sees it often. Um, Mm -hmm. And I've tried to kind of adopt that into my life and just like be willing to see and say all the times I need Jesus and invite him into all those things. Um, And so I think we, I even mentioned a couple weeks ago or sometime like, 
I see that in disciplined moments with my kids. Like I can, if I'm not living into this poor in spirit Mm -hmm. (laughs) identity, I just rush straight into those moments and I like do it out of my own strength and out of my own wisdom and I like handle the problem. Um, But I think poor in spirit in those moments can look like slowing down and stopping and acknowledging my need for Jesus in that moment. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I think part of this is just asking the Lord like to help you see the countless moments that you need him and for us to have hearts that will willingly acknowledge our need for him in like all the little ways. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about some of the other ones. What about meekness? Like what does meekness look like in real life? (laughs) (laughs) What does meekness look like? I've always thought of meekness as power under control. It's not weakness. You know, Mm -hmm. meekness isn't weakness. Meekness is strength. I mean, Jesus said that he was meek. Um, So, and he, he's the, you know, creator of the universe and can calm the wind and Mm -hmm. the waves, you know, can speak to disease and it flees. Mm -hmm. Um, He's got all kinds of power and strength, but it's under control. It's submitted to the authority of his, of the heavenly father when he's on earth and, Mm -hmm. um, and he's gentle. He's not like overpowering, domineering and, um, yeah. Aggressive. Aggressive. That's a good word. Yeah. Yeah. So what does that look like in real life? Mm -hmm. Um, uh, well, I think that it looks like maybe it looks like not using your voice to crush people. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just thinking about how many times I've perhaps, um, done this to my children where instead of being gentle, uh, with them in a moment of, frustration or a disciplinary Mm -hmm. issue you know I just kind of come strong and overpower yeah you know yes yeah I think of like the countless instances where like administratively we're like miffed by something (laughs) so like think about like if you're at a restaurant and they like seat someone else before they seat you but Mm -hmm. you know you were next on the list or like like teeny little silly inconveniences where like we would be we feel in that moment so justified to like push our way through. Um, Mm. I think that is where meekness and gentleness and lowliness can like be beautifully portrayed. That's good. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Ray Ortland has what he calls the unbeatitude. So it's kind of like what our world would value and say is blessed. And Mm -hmm. I think it's really helpful on this one. He says, congratulations to the pushy for they shall win. Um, Mm. And his other one is congratulations to the entitled for they grab what they want. Congratulations to the carefree for they shall be comfortable. And this is like our world, what our world would say is blessed and what our world would congratulate. But that pushy, I feel like really gets at kind of the opposite of the meekness and the kingdom that wants to come into our lives. Um, because there can be just like a fleshly pushiness Mm. in our interactions with people um, that is just not how Jesus would be interacting with them. Yeah. Um, So if somebody's like listening to these and they're like, I want to be more like that. Like, okay, we're, we're telling them you are that. Yes. And yet we feel this sense of like, but I want to see more of it. What can we do with that longing? Is it the meekness? Is that where we specifically talking about all of them or just any of these beatitudes? Well, I think that we start with with praise and thanksgiving that God is is doing this mm-hmm. in us and we just ask for more of that because these if you think about it like I think we could see Jesus in all these things. Yeah. He is the king of this kingdom mm-hmm. and these these are the things that these are the types of people that are in the kingdom and who inherit the kingdom mm-hmm. and who see God and who, you know, all the, the blessings that he talks about in the Beatitudes. So I see Jesus in these things. I want more of Jesus in my life. Lord, would you make me more? Would you grow me in this? Mm-hmm. You know, would would you continue to, um, to rid me of my pride mm-hmm. that and instead uh, make me more humble because that's that was sort of where nick landed the plane was just in this it's a posture of humility yeah um and recognizing your need and turning to god that's where it real life is mm-hmm. yeah so ask for it mm-hmm. yes uh ray orland has this quote that i love it's he says 
if change is your goal, you'll get frustrated. Mm. If Jesus is your goal, you'll change too. (laughs) And just kind of this idea of like, if you're just like, fix your eyes on like poor in spirit and you're just like self be more poor in spirit, you're probably going to get frustrated. Mm -hmm. Like it might work a little bit, but eventually you'll just be frustrated by that endeavor. But if you just look to Jesus who like perfectly embodies all of these things and you run to him knowing that he like welcomes you so lavishly, um, then you also along the way just become more like him, which is these things. Um, So if the Beatitudes, if like these descriptions are your goal, look to Jesus and just keep your eyes on him, keep running to him um, because it's like in his arms that you kind of become, that you do become more like him and that posture of humility develops out of the right place. Yes. So I invite everybody to do that now as you close this podcast um, to just take a minute to look to Jesus, to run to him um, and to just ask him to make you look more like him. Mm. That's good. All right. Thanks for listening. We'll be back next week. See ya.